want to do a podcast. We make a darn good team. It always goes without a hitch. Let's head to Twitch and go start up the stream. Do you want to do a podcast? It's the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Let's start now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Come? Alright, I'll do my I'll do my own bit for myself. Oh, oh wait, no silence! <laughs> We're doing it! Get off the road! Hey Dave. Hey yes, Steve. Hi. There was this blind man that wanted to make a fire pit. He carefully did his math and stuff and figured out that it would take him 99 bricks. So he bought a pallet of 100 in case he needed the spare. Didn't. Did a great job making the fire print. Had the spare brick. Decided, I don't need this thing. Hucked it up in the air. It's not like he saw it come back down. Uh, so he gets his seeing eye dog hooked up and decides, you know what, I've been working all day on this. I'm going to go to the store, grab a snack. So he takes his dog to the store. Technically, it's the other way around. Goes into the store and picks the dog up by the leash and just starts winging him around in a circle. Manager's like, excuse me, sir, can I, can I help you with anything? Nah, just looking around. Uh, you know blind people really don't like skydiving? It scares the crap out of the dogs. Uh, but there was, there was one blind woman that went skydiving um, and, you know, went up with the dog. They were going to have a great time. Dog was so excited, it lifts its, like, pees all over the woman's foot. Just, you know, can't help itself. It is, it's an excited dog. She gives it a biscuit and, you know, leans down, gives it a biscuit. The skydive instructor is like, Are, that was really generous of you. Like, it just peed on you and you're giving it a biscuit? Oh, no, I'm just finding which side is its head so I can kick it in the ass. Tired of being the butt of all of these stupid seeing eye dog jokes, the dog decides, you know what, the plane's at altitude, the hatch is open, I'm out of here. Dog goes for it. Everyone's like, oh my gosh. But there's a sudden gust of wind. And what flies into the, into the plane? The brick! Hey everyone, welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. I'm Boater. And they're about to kick me out. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> welcome, Val- Vladdy. Vladdy's exclaiming, Steve! <laughs> oh boy. Uh, to make up for that being a doorstopper, I don't actually have a Twitch ban today. <laughs> I looked through it when all I could find was like, Nope, we're still talking about Indie Fox, who's still banned, so good riddance with that. So, how's everyone doing this week? Welcome, Steve, to the show. Thank you for having it's me. It's wonderful to have you on. We haven't had you on since you uh, um, surprised our censor with uh, the Game Grumps rant about Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> <Got about that. laughs> That's the reason why I haven't been back. <laughs> you just you just weren't allowed. They were like, mm, mm, mm. right. <laughs> it's now been over a year. Maybe with the time gap of what happened in the middle and all of 2020, they'll have forgotten about it. Never <sighs> not. <Remembered. laughs> and how are you doing, Dave? Wonderful as always. A very busy day here at Insane Games, capped off with the fact that. Ten minutes before we close the gate, two PlayStation 2s came in. Are you looking to buy a PlayStation 2? We have them, and you could have them for a very fair price. Stop on in. Yeah, saw those come in. It was cool. Um, All right, so I don't have any Twitch bans from the last week. Are there any notable game releases coming up in the next week? Steve spotted one. (gasps) Pokemon Unite comes out tomorrow. Free to start on the Nintendo Switch. iOS and Android coming out later by the same people that made the IQ player in China that released 14 Nintendo 64 games. Oh, okay. For the, for the one person in the audience that doesn't know what the IQ player is. It's uh, essentially China or uh, Nintendo's go around in China to release video games back in uh, 2003, I think the article said. Okay. And it's free to start. It's going to be hopefully fun. Hope I'm not disappointed. There are only 20 Pokemon to start with that you can play as. Okay, well, it's it's something. It's a start. <laughs> and and what to what are you uniting for Pokemon in? Is it another, like... like is it like a mainline series? Is it like a Coliseum type game? What, it's an what sort MMO. Of, an, oh my god, an M- a Pokemon MMO. You have my attention at free MMO, because I those are always the best ones. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, Pokemon's branching out pretty well. You got Pokemon that came out twice. Mm -hmm. Didn't do all that great. Um, Pokemon Cafe Mix got released. I, I don't know. I played Pokemon Cafe Mix a lot because it was fun. Also because I wasn't good at Tetris, Tetris 99 and I didn't want to get made fun of by people. So I played Pokken because even when you failed, the game was like, you did a great job and you tried hard. I'm like, I did try hard. Thank you, Pichu. <laughs> you did a great job. Exactly. <laughs> CJ Playmaker, welcome. Our new Pokemon League member plays it a lot and says the MMO is pretty good. All right. I know it did come out uh, in, in the Great White North. Uh earlier and some people obviously got advanced copies and things like that nice um but yeah um other than that uh there was a third installment of a franchise uh called uh destroy all goblins or destroy okay. all orcs kill all orcs orcs must die orcs must die thank you it was on their expression um hadn't Dave up until mixing it up with the destroy all humans franchise would have been so good to have orcs and goblins in the Destroy All Humans franchise. <laughs> Just you're a go you're a, you're a very goblin trying to pretend to be a person walking around like oh, I would like two tomatoes, please. <laughs> you're not a person. You're three goblins in a trench coat. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and they kick in the shit and run away. <laughs> Um, I would love for that game. We should start developing it tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I definitely want to do uh, three. Just. Any sort of game that's three goblins in a trench coat. Orcs must human. <laughs> <laughs> that's writing credit. We're doing it. <laughs> I, I saw a YouTube video that was um, three trench coats pretending, pretending to be a man. Or, so, or three trench coats and a man. And it's just <laughs> this guy and there's like an arm of a trench coat sticking out of like his, you know, a long sleeve shirt. And there's you know, an extra arm of a trench coat coming out. And he just does like the whole rubber limbed thing very well kind of <laughs> flopping around. It was amazing. And the goblins to Joe Cat Goblins. Yes! More like Rigor Mortis. I am three goblins in a trench coat. It's true. <laughs> um, three I, I might like be the, a little generous. I like the half. idea of that game, and you know who definitely is hard up for content and would love a game developed by three people who have never developed a, ga a full game? <laughs> <laughs> who? Google Stadia. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a Google Stadia exclusive. We'll never be able to test it because we will not own a Google Stadia no. between any of us. Um, can but, we develop it on the Ouya and then port it to the stage? Oh my god, you probably can actually. <laughs> you really probably could. Isn't an Ouya just a glorified Android box? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Except it didn't make it as long as the Android box did. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, so, announced this past week, the big one that I noticed, the big piece of news that I noticed. Um, really confused me when I first saw it because it said Steam Deck. And at first I'm like, yeah, I just bought a Stream Deck. What are we? Oh, Valve's new hardware, Steam Deck. Okay, fine. I got it. Um, Valve's new Steam Deck basically looks like... Dave, where's... Uh, um, I put it Steve, back. I'll, Steve, I'll you, oh, no, no you, don't have to, you don't have to grab it. I didn't know if it was an arm's reach. It basically looks like a Nintendo Switch. It is a big screen in the middle control surfaces on the side. It is meant to be a portable way to play your Steam library. Um, I have a whole bunch of stats here I'll go through super quick and then we can discuss. Battery life, two to eight hours. Portal 2, they said, could run for four hours, five to six hours if you limit to 30 frames a second. The screen is going to be seven inches, about on par with this uh, Switch OLED version, uh, also in 720p. Um, it's going to run on Steam OS. We'll accept third-party software and operating system installs, including shopping on the Epic Game Store. The pricing starts at four hundred dollars for sixty-four gigabytes of internal storage, five hundred thirty dollars for two fifty-six gigabytes uh, solid state plus exclusive Steam Community Profile bundle, or six hundred fifty for five hundred twelve gigabytes solid state plus anti-glare etched glass. No matter oh. No matter which you get, it is micro SD expandable. So, like, oh. just get the 64 gig version and get yourself a 512 gig micro SD for like 60 bucks. Oh. Um, those prices, um, uh, Gabe did talk about how uh, the $400 floor was painful, but that's kind of the right way to go into releasing new hardware. I don't think that Microsoft made money on Xbox console sales until the 360. Like, they're selling it at a loss to get it established. So, we'll see how that goes. 
didn't they try to sell the uh, old Steam boxes at a loss to try to get established? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm We're not saying it always works. <laughs> yeah. Looking to you, yeah. Um, they are taking reservations right now. A five dollar deposit basically gets your pl- a place in line, so that in December twenty twenty one, then when your number comes up, you can then order a system. Um, the systems are mostly going to be delivered in twenty twenty two. In order to combat scalping, they said you need to have bought something on your Steam account prior to July of twenty twenty one, which makes sense. But yes. it also threw a bunch of false positives and false negatives and kind of gunked up the ordering process, but eventually it kind of got through. Nevertheless, there are still scalpers selling reservation spots for up to $2,500 on eBay. eBay said, no, that violates our policies. Be gone. Um, there's going to be a dock, kind of like the switches. It is going to be sold separately at an additional price, no pricing available. Though they said it's not going to compete with the Switch because of different types of games they, they don't see it as competing in the same market uh and the last note that i have on this before we just enter round table dis- or rectangular table discussion is that a user's entire steam library will be visible but some games won't play um currently four of the current top 10 destiny 2 apex legends rainbow six siege and PUBG, uh will not play uh because the steam deck is technically going to be a linux machine running proton which is a software suite to emulate windows um, Valve is aware of the problem and working on it, but it's, Linux! it's emulators. It's going to be so customizable, and the, within the first ten minutes of those things hitting people's hands, there's going to be Nintendo games on it, just immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see people like, oh man, I can't find a Switch anywhere. Let me buy a Steam Deck and then put a Switch emulator on it and play like that. <laughs> the fa- So I was, I was when it came out, I was sitting at dinner with uh, a couple of friends in Lake George and we were, <laughs> we were looking at it and my one friend looks up and he goes, it's going to run on Linux. And I'm totally like, it's immortal. <laughs> now that it's on, if, it's, if it runs Linux, folks, no matter what hardware it was, there are still people somewhere running it, operating it, and updating it. You can get those updates for free. And there They'll are going to be people to buying it to do crypto mining. Um, oh, although, more on a follow-up with that later. Yeah, like, it's it's going to have a USB port for mouse and keyboard kind of thing. So, yeah, it'll be a little Linux box. And a decently powerful one at that. Like, it's not going to, you know, it's, it's running 1280 by 800 for yeah. a resolution. And it's not going to be bad, but it's not like a blistering powerhouse compared to gaming desktops. No. That's fine. That's not what it's meant to be. It's not Definitely. supposed to compete against desktops either. Did uh, anyone else notice the similarities between that system and the Game Gear? Because that's all I see when I see that really? thing. Really? Just, huh. it's, it looks like to me like they took the designs of the Game Gear and the Sega Nomad and they went, yeah, people won't recognize this. It's fine. <laughs> well, is it because it does look a lot like the Switch Lite, just wearing black and bulkier yeah (laughs) so yeah now that you mention it yeah i do kind of see some game gear in that because you know if you want to start tracing that family tree you can pull the switch light back from the game gear (laughs) and then you have all this sort of family wreath things going on and eventually coming out with the, the steam deck yeah and here i got a steam link still in the box says demon dragon um should we place wagers is this going to be a super successful thing or is this going to show up on amazon prime day in three years for nice and cheap because the two games that they were showing it running were Death Stranding and um, either of you remember which I do it not. was another enormously complicated yeah. title yeah and so four hours not great but the fact that it's playing those titles for four hours on yeah. a handheld not bad yeah. I think it'll definitely be something for a certain market of people that want to play PC games on the move, mm-hmm. that don't want to then have, you know, the the most powerhousey cell phone plus an extra backup battery for it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's going to light the world on fire. I don't think people are going to go out of their way unless those things are more readily available than the OLED switch. Yeah. Then like, I think people are going to be picking those up for a little Timmy and 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 all those like. I could see that. <sighs> I th- like a lot of for me the benefit of pc gaming and the thing that a lot of people are doing on steam is like modability of some of the games um and certainly you're not going to be playing modded versions on this um there is cloud save so that if you play something on your pc that is unmodded and thus not messing with your save file your save file you can then switch to that on the go 
it's not exactly dropping it in a deck and then picking it up, but you know, you play control on your PC and save it and then say, I'm going to be on a plane for six hours mm. tomorrow, so take that with me. That's actually true. There is no Citadel tonight because I'm flying out at 6 a.m. <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, I don't have a Steam Deck. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> uh, um, but it's, yeah, like, I could, s I definitely see its place in the market, but then I also saw the place in the market for the Steam Link. And it's a matter of, yeah, like, uh, how, mu how much will the consumer see that place in the market and decide that that's where they are? Because that's another thing, too. Like, this is the kind of thing that will make or break on marketing. Um, you know, I have been the owner of many pieces of hardware down the line that, in my estimation, were superior to others, but had popular opinion going against them and were never properly marketed. Rest in peace, Windows Phone 8. Um, but... Oh, God, what were the Windows phones that I... My first ever smartphone was... It was a Windows phone... And it was a, it was a gimmick because it was a smartphone, but it was all the razzmatazz of the current like it was a flip phone and this and oh that and the other. Yeah. Oh my god! Because I loved that thing and it worked so well straight up until I moved to Lowville, New York, and it hit the snow, and then it was not going to work ever again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, like having Windows Phone was kind of fun. Um, not having internet on it was not fun, but it was okay because I didn't need to have it, which was cool. Yeah. Um, but Steve. Being the only person between the three of us I know that has a gaming laptop. So of the three of True. us, the only person that is currently in the market that that's seemingly marketed to. Yeah, because like we have PCs, but they're tethered at home and yep. we're not going to take them on the go. You have something that's kind of on the go. What is your perspective on this portable solution? I can see it for like... It, it's just going to be an emulation box. Like no one's going to run Steam games on it. It's all going to be essentially what the PSP currently is in the market. What the Vita and the 3DS are currently in the market. Emulation boxes for old games. Why would I? I could pick up this, play PS1, PS2, GameCube, Nintendo 64, maybe even like PS3 games on mm -hmm. this. So you're seeing like not so much its intended use, but it's going to be one of those pieces of hardware that is going to have a long shelf life because of an aftermarket community. Absolutely. Okay, I can see that. But the Funko Pop will, approach. It <laughs> will bomb, though. Yeah, I'm not... Like, so I'm going to make a prediction, and usually when I make predictions about tech, it ends up being wrong. But I think it's also not going to do well. I think it's going to have middling support in its first year... People are going to get them and be like, oh, that's neat. And then it's going to be like the Wii Fit board where it gathers dust after six months. Um, and it'll be on life support for another couple of years. And just like Google is trying to figure out what to do with the Stadia, Valve is going to have to figure out what to do with the um, Steam Deck. And on its own, unlike the Stadia, if they take down the service, your thing is just a box of silicon. This is at least still useful without it, so I think that the hardware will have life after that. You know, Valve doesn't have to do a ton of support for it as it is, but they probably will, because it's a custom operating system, they probably will have to do like security updates and stuff for it, and eventually there will be yep. an end of life for it, and I don't see its legacy end of life going any longer than five years. Do you see them making three of them? That's, that's the thing that I said in the other, like we had the Steam Link, now we have the Steam Deck, and it was someone who was very like, oh, you're dumb coming out with these. I'm like, well, that's fine. This will fail, and then Valve won't make a third piece of hardware. They are terrified of that number. Is Newell afraid of that number? Is that what it is? I don't know. There's, like, a, there's a really fun song by the Chalk Eaters on YouTube that is called Count to Three um, that, Gabe, that Gabe Newell actually like guest appeared in. It's, like the song starts off with him with him is this what you've been waiting for say one two and four and it <laughs> goes into like a really fun like electro swing bop oh that's so good i like the fact that of all of the well let's be honest bond villain-esque 
people over out there in uh, in in uh, in California that could really like do these things. Gabe Newell really is seemingly self-aware of his public image and and exists in it yes yes Um, very true he has no problem when he's at conventions or even if people go to the company appearing in large and small content creator stuff for giggles Uh uh-huh which is good on you for being a celebrity and supporting the people that that make these things it helps it helps the medicine go down way easier during the Steam sales. Yeah, um, this is the, as opposed to like I saw an article today that was like, why didn't any supervillain try to kidnap Jeff Bezos when he came down from the Blue Origin flight today? And it's because he's already a supervillain. He's the head of the supervillain league. You think they want to cross him? So when when do we get? Uh, so Branson now went to space in the in the model that he has for for what he has. Um, uh, you know, Amazon's, Amazon's dictator yep. uh, now hath gone to space. When do we uh, when do we get the trifecta? When, uh, when I don't does, know. Uh, it's interesting because like you can say I'm I'm no fan of Elon Musk, but he's kind of been like, yeah, I could go, but there's more important things for my rockets to be doing, like launching my car, <laughs> the first Falcon Nine yeah, heavy but, payload. Yeah, but if none of them are going to be Batman, and if none of them are going to be Iron Man, at least let's go like. No, but you know, they're all super villains. Like, like Bezos is Lex Luthor. I but I can't again, as someone that works in education, I look greatly forward to ten years from now opening the textbooks and talking about the space race. And then talking about the Cold War. And then talking about the fallout from that, talking about how private companies started to go into space, spaceship one, all these things, and then talking about how three billionaires, three stooged their way into space in three very different vehicles because neither of them could actually work together on the same place, so they were going, nah, nah, nah. like, <laughs> yeah. First we had the, nat- the nationally driven space race, now we have the corporate driven space race. Oh boy. Um, send nerd glasses to space. Send us. The we space. got a crew of three right here. We would, we would, we would do astronaut training. Um, I can do basic geometry. In fact, uh, if someone's ambitious enough and works for one of these local military recruiters, get us on the training course for one day. I'll do it. I'll strap a GoPro to my head, and you will watch us suffer. Um, just for you, please send us to space camp, please. <laughs> they sound like the beginning of Aesop's Fable morality. <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's the Steam Deck. I think we've taken enough time with that. There will be more updates on that. We'll keep you updated as it goes. But for now, you can go to uh, you can go to Valve's website. You can go to Steam's website and hold your place in line for five dollars. That will go towards your purchase of a Steam Deck. And check it out for yourself. If the idea of having a handheld PC, not a desktop, not a not a laptop, a handheld PC gaming thing. So that you could play while you're waiting to pick up people uh, uh, between things, doctor's appointments, things like that. It does have practical application if PC gaming is for you. Mm -hmm. It's just not necessarily for the three of us because Filthy Console Gamer has his own home build and PC and stuff. And Steve. I I I just, you know. And Steve. (laughs) You just don't. And Steven. (laughs) Where the hell have you been when I've been playing ukulele, by the way? <laughs> Welcome to America. Capitalism, greed, and clout chasing. The new Baseball Hot Dogs Apple Pie. No. Baseball Hot Dogs Apple Pie is the cover. It's always been capitalism, greed, and clout chasing. I like the idea of, of if we start doing... It's American is Apple Pie. Capitalism. <laughs> Hot Dogs. Greed. And, and Baseball. God, Jason. Boy, <laughs> if that sure ain't as American as having people work themselves to death so you can make a dollar. Yeah! Are you guys making fun of me just because I work seven days a week? <laughs> <laughs> you do this to yourself. Anyway. By the by, by the by, hit that subscribe button here on Insane Games TV and make sure to share it with your friends and family. Make it worth it when this one keels over. <laughs> Truly, when I die, I want someone to have to go, yay, he streamed, but look at us now. <laughs> Are we going to put exclamation point cheer 100 on your tombstone? <laughs> no, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just be, it'll just be, here lies David Mann, zero of three TFCA dicked on strikes on his channel, and then it's the errata getting smaller into the dirt. <laughs>
<laughs> this tombstone has been muted due to TMCA copyright issues. <laughs> That's actually what it's going to say on the Marvel of <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, speaking of DMCA, <laughs> didn't one of you guys have something about Twitch? Um, <laughs> so, uh, Demon Dragon, does Dave get the day off if I hit a certain number of subs? No. No, I don't. No, we got However, we, we can, we can ask, we can ask Dan. <laughs> however, however, we will definitely ask Dan about what sort of goofy shenanigan goals we can set. For insane games, if we hit X amount of subs in a month. Well, it's like when someone like tweets KFC and is like, "How many retweets do I need to get to get free KFC for a year?" And they're like, 2.78 million. <laughs> All right, we're on it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> Let's get some stupid number like that. Oh, Aww, thank you, Vladdy. thank you very much, Vladdy, for the thousand bits cheered. <laughs> Trying to make that happen. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, uh, as we know, Twitch, DMCAs, YouTube and DMCAs, Internet and DMCAs uh, are just... Go together like baseball and apple pie. <laughs> baseball, apple pie, and Elon Musk needs to go to space. Um, but we are looking at a very interesting time because uh, someone has added a Twitch uh, uh, little machination that you can have down below on your channel called the Spotify Synchronizer, where if you choose to not play Spotify on your stream, but have Spotify going to a headset, for example, the mm -hmm. easiest way to have you go to, and you want the people watching your stream, because let's just say you're like our friend Rafe Wolf and you play World of Warcraft, where there is some downtime between things or things like that are going on. So you just want to sit there and vibe. Exactly. Music can play. Uh, or the many, many friends we have that do art streams or things like yeah. that. You um, don't have to worry about going to the same copyright free things. You just want to uh, just want to do you know, put together a Spotify playlist. Uh, next time I do model building, I'm definitely going to try this one and see how it goes. Um, but it's basically called it's called Spotify Synchronizer. It allows you to play Spotify in a browser and share the exact song and timestamp that you are listening to with your viewers. They can basically click on it and it opens up Spotify for them. Um, obviously ads and all that play. So Twitch is happy, Spotify is happy, and DMCA doesn't come for your content. Um, yeah, they, they're getting two listens. You're, you, or, you know, if, you're, if you have 100 people watching, 50 of them use this, they're getting 51 listens. And there is a button you have to press, for example, uh, it's basically a nope button that if you're skipping a song that makes sure that everybody gets dragged with you. Yeah, because um, otherwise if you like skip a song, you're like, you know what? I'm not feeling this one. Let me go on to this, you know, whatever. If you don't force it to push to everyone that's on the synchronizer with you, they're going to be like, you're not listening to the same thing I'm listening. Why are we <laughs> listening to Return to Innocence when you are clearly rocking up to something with a much higher BPM? So that, uh, that will be great uh we'll definitely be checking it out and testing it out and seeing how it goes um i will stop for a moment since we're on the topic of music because i was hyped as hell because yesterday one of my favorite bands iron maiden announced their 17th studio album nice called sensu um i don't really have the full details on what it is it's really cool, though, because it has Eddie in samurai armor, um, and tracks seem to be along a samurai-esque theme and things like that. A band like Iron Maiden has covered many different um, topics and, and genres, historical events, things like that. Um, Welcome, I once seen a hedge. Uh, that's weird for a VOD Spotify. <laughs> um, but... Iron Maiden's album is going to be coming out September 3rd. Oh, yeah, that would be weird on a, a VOD. I mean, you just have to deal with not listening to Spotify with it because it's not... Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, Sorry, continue. No, no, no worries. Um, glad for, always glad for discourse through you guys watching the stream and talking to us. We're happy to hear your opinions on the topics we're talking about. Your, your two cents. We want it. We appreciate it. We bank it. Um, but... Got really overhyped about that. Super <laughs> excited for Iron Maiden uh, to be back in the studio. Yes, all of them are ancient. Yes, they're stable to rock. Yes, there's a single out there. It's 
okay. Um, but in Iron Maiden fashion, not a single song on that 80 minute album is less than five minutes. So uh, nice. if you need music to, to jam out to, to do long drives, or just to do something that you're like laundry or something to, Iron Maiden's usually a good go. Um, Steve. Yeah. What you got? Um, I didn't have anything prepared, but jumping off of uh, okay. Iron Maiden, everyone's favorite coming of age lead actor from the 80s, Corey Feldman, is coming out with another album. It's, it's he put out a single the 17th, uh, <laughs> Rock and no, no, Rock and Revolution. It is, uh, I forgot what it's called. It, it wasn't good. In typical Corey Feldman I'm just fashion. loving all of the energy that I'm getting filtering over here. So, wait a minute. Corey Feldman does music. Yes, he does. Uh, I'm on Wikipedia. That's the best way to find any information uh, about him. Oh my god, it's called Love Returns! Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've only ever gotten, like, visibly angry at a song once in my life, and it was his cover of Working Class Hero off of Angelic to the Core, his 2006 album. Wow. And uh, so that's somewhere Brandon it's quite the catalog. has... Uh, they have video of me getting visibly angry. I want that video. I'll have to uh, ask them. Please for find that video and, and post it to the discords and, and let us see Angry Steve about it. Um, have, oh my god. The... The, co the cover of this alone is worth the Google. Oh, my God. Um, it's it's literally like somebody looked at, at old, like, Elton John and the Beatles works and went, <laughs> I can do that, too. I can, el el I can out Elton John the Beatles. Ah! <laughs> um, here's, here was a fun one. That we, that we discussed a little bit. So War Thunder is a game that is about tank combat. And uh, the user, Fear Not, uh, tried to point out where the developers, Gage and Entertainment, were getting details wrong about the Challenger 2 tank. But it's okay. He brought receipts to show what they were getting wrong about it. Those receipts were screenshots of classified documents from official Army Equipment Support publication. Yep. Oh, no. Yep. Used official military documentation. He's, he's believed to be a commander in the United Kingdom's Royal Tank Regiment. So up goes the classified material. And then in come the devs, pulling that back down. Um, we have written confirmation from the, from the Ministry of Defense that this document remains classified. By continuing to disseminate it, you are in violation of the Official Secrets Act, as stated, by, this is written by a senior technical moderator, Templar, on the message boards, oh, publicly God. seen. Oh. In violation of the Official Secrets Act, as stated by the warning on the cover of the document, an offense which can carry up to a 14-year prison sentence if prosecuted. Of this, you are already aware. As a service person, you have signed a declaration that you understand the act and what actions it compels you to take. Every time you post this, you place us, international representatives of Gajan, especially any UK citizens, in hot water as the warning so helpfully states that unauthorized retention of a protected document is an offense. That's... Hilarious! So to, to <laughs> so basically, someone got pretty hurt on the internet, and then literally used government documentation, covert do government documents, to settle that argument. Um, I'm going to pull a bit from the Kotaku com comment section on this one. Markoff8585 says, "You ever get so mad on a message board you committed what amounts to treason?" Prime Directive replies, January 6th in one line. Um, back to the original bit. Um, it's, uh, community manager Smin 1080p added that no charges will be made as classified documents... No, sorry, no changes will be made in the game as classified documents are considered invalid source material. Quote, before any discussion, handling, or bug reports are even made, proof of a document's declassification will be required as well as where it was sourced. Last time such a document was shared that was claimed to be unclassified, it was in fact still classified, and it was confirmed that it should never have been shared. We make it very clear that we will not handle any source material unless it is publicly available and fully declassified with the oh, rights to prove that. God. 
The user received a warning from the developer and the thread was closed. We have not yet heard about any repercussions that they face from anyone with more power than a games developer online. How's it going, Shiny Lang? Welcome as we go over the ridiculous that's, that the internet brings. So, that's... I can understand getting mad. I can understand getting mad on the internet. I can understand wanting to do something but feeling mad over the internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's violating... <laughs> oh, Just God. leaking declassified... acts to your job. Leaking classified <laughs> material so that you can be right on the internet. Is certainly a flex. <laughs> it's a decision, and that person made it. Um, <laughs> like, why? Why <laughs> would anyone think it's a good idea to do that? Have either of you guys played Military Sims on the internet? I have not. Okay, have you? Okay. Not not like, no, not, not to a, that extent. A good family member of mine, Lucas, uh, God bless him, was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. Then he left the Navy and was in civilian life, and he decided to try doing, like, World of Tanks and this and that and the other. And he would get so angry because he had flown in these things and driven these things yeah. and put them together. He's like, this is wrong, and I'm not playing. Well, the he, second that you try to play a game that deals with your field of expertise, it is usually a frustrating thing because it is meant to be accessible and not necessarily accurate. He, so he did find a lot of games that he liked because although they weren't one-to-one -one accurate, they were at least accurate enough. Yeah, they were or, accurate or, in feel, yeah, in broad or, scope. Yeah, exactly. The stra the stra it was like strategy games where it was... T like, so like the World of Tanks was a game you would play because it was teams of tanks. So it was okay that this tank was overpowered and this one was underpowered because yeah. it was team strategy, not so much the individual just Who's banging the bigger tanks gun. together. Yeah. Um, like Guitar Hero but, to a guitarist. Yeah. Man, people get so butthurt on those. <laughs> like, like combining Steve and I can t like the hours and hours now of because they've combined PC and console Overwatch, the people. Getting absolutely bent at an L-shaped angle uh, over n seemingly nothing to us as our group. Yeah, yeah. But, like, uh, uh, apologies for the, the, the use of, of, of terminology, but, like, uh, previously. But, like, people would get so bent out of shape for nothing. And, like, you would have these dissertations in World of Tanks. Well, like, well, we shouldn't have lost because... And then citing historical precedents and things like that. And I'm like, man... I am too dumb for this game. I just, I don't have the textbook learning to be able to be like, well, you are incorrect because actually, in the battle of 17... Like, no, but you have, a common, out like that. you have a common sense internet degree and that allows you to counter with a counterpoint. Like, Fuck you, get good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, my internet connection. Like, <laughs> God, that's... Treasonous acts to solve an internet issue. I, I um, love that, like, I, again, I read this on Kotaku, and it finishes with, like, um, the thread was closed and he was reprimanded. Okay, but what exactly happened when his commander was like, I'm sorry, you did what? About a game? As somebody that has had to sign a technology use agreement mm -hmm. and, and properties and things like that, the usually the agreement has exactly what will happen to you if you violate it. Oh yeah, like, right on it as you sign it. Like whether something yeah. is like classified or just a garden variety non disclosure agreement, you know there there's discussion of like, what's the closest you've ever gotten to violating an NDA? And sure enough, like I I got into a closed beta for something one time and I couldn't talk about it, but it started to come up in conversation and I had to be like. I'm enjoying myself. I think I can say that. <laughs> uh, Joe and Amy have that a lot with uh, Magic the Gathering oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, they I can get, bet. They, they get, get so, much so many things in advance. Where I'm like, so, Joe, what are you working on? And he goes, nothing. And that's flatly not true because he's always doing something for that channel. And I'm always like, oh, oh, nothing, huh? And he goes, yes, nothing. We're moving on from this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm usually like, needle, needle, needle. <laughs> yeah, um, I know that uh, Jen uh, ended up going out to uh, Riot Games when she was still in college as part of the collegiate program when they first started it off. Um, there was like 30 colleges that started it when it first got going. 
and she saw a lot of stuff that wouldn't come out for the next couple years, and she, she had to shut up about it when there was speculation on the oldie forums. Steph, just blink twice if you got to play the uh, League of Legends single-player story no, field that game. Was, that was that was Jen, and this was years ago. Well, yes, <laughs> but Steph, Steph's good like that. Okay. Information. Okay, that's fair. Steph, blink twice if you know about the game. Just tell me that I should buy it. We can see it through the. We can see it through the camera. <laughs> we know. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Confirmed. Uh, <laughs> or not. Speaking of improperly using things you're supposed to be used for, you know. Do we need a not safe for work tag? Getting getting sponsored is uh, is is really cool. Uh, having yeah. sponsorships is really awesome. Yeah. Getting a big sponsorship like Budweiser is not an easy achievement. Okay. Yeah. A team called Counter Logic Gaming, which originally started as League of Legends, got purchased by a larger parent company and started branching off into all of the competitive league games to do things like that, had sponsored content by Budweiser where you got to see some behind the scenes things on the team. Okay. The video they released last week was one of the teams being reprimanded and told that they were going to be disbanded and potentially fired. Right! Oh, I remember hearing about that. <laughs> they <laughs> then released that content because I'm guessing the people that were doing this over here didn't know the team that were in the room with the camera were doing this meeting in, like, conference room A. Yeah. Um, and then the person editing the video just you know, probably went through really quickly and saw no curse words were said or just are allowed to, depending on what yeah, platforms like they Yeah, like they were run. probably thinking something, like when you do a show, uh, a documentary TV series, say like on Discovery or something, it's like, ooh, this will up the drama. Yeah, like, oh, look, that person looks really mad. This will be great for, you know, the, oh, here you get some behind the scenes. Boom. Um, not, not appropriate. Uh, it is a violation of... I cannot speak for esports people, but most people's contracts for your employers, you cannot be publicly fired uh, for these things unless you work for the WWE. Then in which case Vince McMahon can absolutely lean forward into the camera and scringe and do you want to do it? Yar fire. <laughs> Voter, do you want to take a attempt at it? No. I'm it's a, it's a staple on Friday that Mia Kai and Steve usually divulge into just doing Vince McMahon voice and yelling at each other like, "Why is this game taking so long? Because you're terrible, and no one will ever love you." Like, uh, but no. unless you work for the WWE, you can't be publicly fired unless you, of course, are doing something publicly, and then your employer has no choice but to fire you then on the spot. The most anyone might say is no longer with the company, and I'm reading that off of my next topic I want to bring up. Um, but. They, they, that Counter Logic Gaming then had to go out on social media, damage control just the hell out of this. Oh, yeah. Um, and an outpouring of support came for the teams and the members. But, um, I, I don't want to call them out, but I did a little digging on their team and we could play better than they do because they don't do very well. Yikes. So, I mean, they're also playing at more competitive levels than us. Yes, but uh, when you play at competitive levels and you lose perpetually, we could probably do just as well. Um, yeah. When your record's Owen blank. I mean, the, um, actual, the actual quote was something like, um, you know, you need to, to get it together. You may not be with this organization for much longer. It wasn't straight up, y'all are going to get fired. But it's still the threat of discontinuing concurrent employment or whatever i'm losing my words later in the discussion they did mention the, the person one of the people looked very like happy and they were laughing and they said you guys won't probably won't be a unit going forward yes that was this. it that was it yeah um but yeah um we could also lose all our games at that level <laughs> exactly if you're owen i can be owen <laughs> like <laughs> but we can be owen at a lower price point <laughs> Hey, get us signed up right now. Do you have $50? Because I don't have $50 right now. Do with $50. <laughs> um, so, Vertigear, which makes gaming chairs, was in hot water this past week uh, for sharing a sexist meme on, on Twitter. It was just something that more or less was like, ha ha, the stereotypes of girl gamers on Twitter playing to show off their body rather than the gameplay. Um, and... First, Vertigear responded to the outrage over it with a boilerplate, we're sorry and we need to do better as a company, kind of thing. 
Um, but pressure mounted because people brought screenshots from previous times that that account shared stupid sexist bullshit. Um, and they eventually came back and, and stated that the individual responsible for these posts will no longer be with the company. Um, because it was very clearly just one guy who clearly thought, ha ha, sexism in games is hilarious, and shared it using Vertigear's official Twitter account. So, Vertigear makes what again? They make gaming chairs. Okay. You make chairs! There is a billion bits of material out there about crumbs. I can think of 700 jokes about your ass falling ha, asleep. Material! Like, uh, perfect. See? Literally! People! Come on! Vertigear has also pledged to use the opportunity to restructure their business more inclusively, but whatever. What? Uh, just clean up your Twitter act and stop being dumb about it. Yeah, You're like, a chair company. Y you had someone running your social media account that uh, thought sexism got laughs. And actually, sadly, looking at their uh, second apology, a bunch of people, well, you did nothing wrong. It was actually funny, you know. All of that well, there's, there's apologists for everything so, on so, the yeah, internet. <laughs> it did get a lot of laughs, but it's also not okay in the year of our Lord 2021. It, it's not appropriate any time, but, you know. Um, you know what is appropriate, though? People supporting <laughs> excellent causes. Yes. Studio Ghibli has made films that have broadened the horizons of millions that have brought light to children and adults' eyes, that have brought characters to life that you wouldn't believe. Did you know in Japan there is a museum for Studio Ghibli and all of these things? Um, it's not a Disney subsidiary before we continue the story. Um, Disney distributes their films in North America, but Ghibli is not owned by Disney. Which, by the way, cha-ching, um, but... Um, the Studio Ghibli Museum, as we can imagine, during the COVID shutdown was closed and then open and closed again and open. They weren't having a great time. And things like that don't work incredibly well when you have upkeep and maintenance and people to pay and uh, just, you know, a general building to pay rent and tax on. Well, they posted a, a GoFundMe equivalent Mm -hmm. Where you could po you could do like a twenty five dollar donation and get your name put in a thank you and this and that and the other. Well, they raised two hundred twenty one point five percent over their goal, nice. and they still have thirty five days. The exact total as of writing uh, fifty seven minutes ago <laughs> was twenty two million one hundred fifty six thousand seven hundred thirty five yen, which through equivalency and and you know all those things and. You know, getting it over the border, losing some in your pocket, leaving some in the dryer, is about 200,000 US dollars. Congratulations, nice. uh, Studio Ghibli Museum. Uh, you know, we're giving you the rub here on Behind the Counter. You could send us to you. We would love to visit. We would love to see you. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, that would be great. Maybe Do you have. Go ahead. Go ahead. Maybe after the Olympics, though. That's uh, it's a lot of people over in Japan right now. That... <gasps> Did you guys see? This is a very this is a very PG thirteen story. Uh, everyone knows about the Olympic Village and the things that go on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you know anything that I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. This year, to disincentivize the athletes from doing the things that they always do in the Olympic Village, they were given cardboard beds. Wow. <laughs> Cardboard wow. beds that were rated for the we the weight of the athlete individually and not for, say, two, two adults athletes. or more. Um, or more. <laughs> and, uh, boy howdy, did that strike me as hilarious when I saw that on news media. <laughs> <laughs> they tweeting the pictures. They like pulled the blankets and covers off the beds, and it was literally just cardboard. That is not the word I was thinking that sentence was gonna end with. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, the Olympic Village this year will be less of a party and more of a Yahtzee tournament. We'll say. Um, um, okay, first off, number one, that is probably actually really bad for a lot of the athletes as far as, like, comfort goes and being in your peak physical form to be sleeping. Uh, like I mean, that. there's, there's, there's bed tops and things okay, like that, okay. pillow tops and 
all that stuff. And number um, two, that's not going to stop anyone who you know wants to. No, it's not going to stop you, the you Olympic get, Village. You get two people who want to. Uh, that's a concrete if, floor with no rug. If, go for if it. you are not sure what boaters less so subtly alluding to, but we're all talking about, uh, just Wikipedia the Olympic Village history. Uh, boy howdy. Uh, what you'll, a time! You'll also find a, a uh, of course, a news story about there already being um, uh, COVID nineteen positive results and uh, from some of the athletes. So dun dun da da dun dun da 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 dun dun da da dun dun da. Um, the Olympics exploiting people so that we get our money. Speaking of the Olympics, we here at Nerd Glasses carry ourselves at an Olympic level with our stories and things like that. Do we? There's a correction from last week's. Story yes. about a raid that happened in Ukraine, about a crypto mining uh, uh, base that happened. That, as it turns out, wasn't uh, crypto mining. 3,800 PlayStation 4 consoles were still correctly uh, confiscated, things like that. But the initial reports of it being a cryptocurrency mine were incorrect. It was nothing big, nothing at all. The FIFA Ultimate Team. Uh, farm because God knows I don't want to grind that game to be competitive online with that 10 year old but they certainly would and for a nominal fee you could have purchased one of those profiles that they were grinding on yeah like uh, so okay I guess cards for FIFA ultimate teams I guess the cards are are used like they, you can trade them and it ends up being yes. like there is the, real world monetary value attached to them either yes. by EA themselves you open, or... You open packs of cards that then have players inside and are either better or worse than the players you currently have. Or, for example, if you're a very big fan of Manchester United, you want to have all of the Manchester United field yep. on your own team. But because it is a loot box style thing, it's considered gambling in some regions. Belgium, for instance, has banned FIFA Ultimate Teams... And, yeah, it wasn't crypto mining because there are much better pieces of hardware for it. Instead, all those PS4 were mining time to get card decks for FIFA Ultimate Teams. Hilarious. <laughs> Actually more glad to know that there is some dude out there that was planning on doing absolutely... As someone that's in three competitive leagues, Pokemon, MLB, and, and Madden, I put the time in, okay? And I grind my teams. They're terrible. Because I'm the owner of them. But I put that time in. Um, whereas, uh, I don't respect people that you know, are going to do work. Like, I grew up with football cards much like your baseball cards, plus soccer. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so here's one. Uh, mm -hmm. Our friends at Tencent have decided that everything the light touches is theirs. Yesterday, they, they uh, made an like offer that. That's good. to Sumo Digital... <laughs> Sumo Digital is a developer of third-party IPs. They were founded in the UK in 2003. In um, Tencent, well, they have agreed to be bought by Tencent for $1.3 billion equivalent. Um, it is awaiting approval of the shareholders, but the development studio is really happy to go forward with it. They don't have any big IPs of their own, but they've developed, like... <laughs> Forza Horizon and stuff like that when other people own the intellectual property. Just think of that, though. You mean we get more money and less of, less risk on our part for developing things? Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, no, all, we, thank all we you. have to do is have uh, Chinese government own corporate uh, overlords. Yay! Um, money is money, especially if you're not in the actual office. Um, and then today, uh, they acquired a majority stake in Stumlock Studios, who is the developer of BattleRight, which is a popular MOBA over in China. Um, no, nothing was disclosed here about how much money was spent on that. They previously did have a minority stake. Now they just have a controlling majority stake. Doesn't Tencent own everything? <laughs> they, they own so much. They own like a 5% share of Ubisoft, a 5% share of Activision Blizzard. They 100% own Riot Games. Um, like I can I can get the list right now of what they own. It'll take me a minute to look up. Um, but like, yeah, they they own a lot, and you know, someone was like, oh well, it's so it's uh, everyone gets all up in arms when Tencent does it, but if Disney buys stuff, it's okay. No, I'm not okay with that either. I don't like a company that owns so much stuff um, that it's is bad for competition. 
chat, Boater, Steve, how many years until Disney snaps up enough stuff that they do eventually have enough on paper to, to be charged <laughs> I, and throw off some antitrust they, laws? They gotta be real close. Like right now, there is <laughs> there is momentum. How many for... years? Let's put it in years. What do you? What is chat? What do you guys think? Because they they very intelligently design their stuff so that it doesn't set off flags in any governing body, statewide, countrywide, or globally. I'm but I'm, they're getting to critical mass with owning almost. I'm gonna everything. say by the end of the decade. So nine years, I guess. When was Disney founded? Thirty-six. I'm gonna say. Hang on, we'll, no, we'll have a guest calling. When was Disney founded? Okay, well, you're looking for that. Uh, Tencent owns a hundred percent share of Riot Games, forty percent of Epic Games, twenty-three percent of Don't Nod, five uh, percent of Activision Blizzard, five percent of Ubisoft, five percent Paradox. When did Disney get founded? Uh, 1923 was the Walt Disney Company. Oh, I was off uh, 13 years. I guess that's... The 100th anniversary is when it's going to go down. <laughs> nice. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> you just think a guy in a suit's going to walk in to the Blues Brothers team. Dun, 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 dun. Just be like, you know what, what, Disney? We're throwing the book at you. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> You'll never take us alive, coppers. <laughs> Like, right now, I think that federal antitrust stuff is mostly focused on tech companies, Facebook, Amazon. Um, but I think Disney is, you know, oh. tech, Disney's already taken a number and is sitting in the queue. That'll be so good. I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, when my kids are my age right now. Okay. Oh no, news blues about this movie. We've all seen PB2000. Huh? <laughs> I liked John Goodman in it. It wasn't great, but it was John Goodman, and that, that was enough for me. Any other topics we wanted to hit before moving on to the fiction zone tonight? Um I got a couple things I'm fine skipping. Don't don't care about FaZe Clan. Ubisoft is getting uh, more accusations thrown at it for institutional harassment. Next week we'll There's talk your about story. Uh uh, yeah. As a heads up, if you're cheating on Call of Duty, Ravensoft is getting closer to getting you. So uh, hide while you can. Um, and uh, Sega has landed themselves in some hot water. And next week, I'll be talking about how you could have potentially been cheated by a game, an arcade claw machine, and actually have good precedent for it. So we are now going to move on to the Fiction Zone. We have been on for an hour because there is no Citadel tonight. We are instead going to take a little bit of time and go over these six topics right here. Everything that we talk about from here on out for the main stories are going to be fictional. We have headlines here, we have topics here, and we are going to riff on them as though they are truthful. But please do not clip these and call us dumb. There's plenty of other reasons to do that. And do not clip these and try to share it as a tip to Polygon that something's happening. No, Don't you should do definitely do that. Damn it, there goes my Tuesday. You night. should share Insane Games TV to Polygon and be like, by the way, big scoop. Hot tip. <laughs> you totally shouldn't do that. All right, I'm going to grab the first topic. And if while Boat is opening it, if you want to help toss us a topic, down below in the Discord, in the... Uh, in the nerd glasses section, there is it's topics from a hat, or hat trick topics. Uh, hat trick, yeah, that was it. Hat um, trick topics. Definitely, uh, Steve, you take one. I'll grab one, and, and we'll uh, we'll be able to roll the moot. Uh, so, um, with Smash no longer with saying that they're not going to be taking any more additional characters uh, onto their roster, um, other fighting games have stepped up and said, you know what, we're gonna have a guest, and so. The next person on the roster for Mortal Kombat is going to be Tony Stewart. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, they've talked about how his fatality is going to be basically uh, pinning you against the catch fence at 200 miles an hour. By the way, that is relevant because Tony Stewart has been on our set since the founding of the program. And thank you, Steve. Four said Christmas ornament. <laughs> um, if you don't get the inside joke, watch Danny NASCAR. 
I don't even know necessarily what inside joke that would be. I just know enough to know who Tony Stewart is. Watch, watch Danny NASCAR. Tune in for behind the counter, uh, and make sure to tell Dan and Mike that we made this joke. (laughs) So, do you want to go next, or should I? Uh, Breaking news, folks! In the gaming, in the gaming world, we were just talking about this because, ladies and gentlemen, the prediction is nigh. 2021, because Tencent has just shelled out the simoleons and they have purchased the entirety, the ears, the nose, the gloves, all of Disney is now property of Tencent. Um, I mean, that's one way for Disney to avoid getting the copyright suit. Exactly. They will, they will no longer be facing copyright suits. They will be facing copyright, uh, heavy uh, scrutiny from a governing body that is going to be editing their content severely. Looking forward to the next Mickey Mouse film. <laughs> oh, no. That would mean Winnie the Pooh as well, right? <laughs> that would mean we would never see another Winnie the Pooh anything ever again. If that were, oh, were, it, were no. it to be true, I hope uh, at the last minute Walt Disney gets unfrozen and stops the sale. <clears throat> Steve! All right, we all know the best character in Overwatch has to be Doomfist. Gotta love him. He punches things and punches things and punches things some more. Well, in in recent development, the voice actor for Doomfist has recently recorded voice lines for the GTA San Andreas Overwatch crossover. Rockstar and Activision Blizzard combined one time, and it's going to be absolutely glorious. I, I like so so a GTA Overwatch um, kind of thing. In, in other words, like Overwatch 2 is never going to come out. They're just going to keep developing more and more stuff and re-releasing Overwatch 1 on 17 different consoles. Yes. Oh, snap, <laughs> here it goes again. <laughs> um, while we're talking crossovers and things being in genres that you would think they just shouldn't be, um, they announced that there will be a Tekken Dance Dance Revolution spinoff. Um, that's gonna be, it's, it's going to start only in arcades, because it's oh. going to be one of those, like, DDR machines where you're dancing side by side, and that's the combat controls as you're fighting. Oh, so, God! Like, it's a dance-off for your combat game. I'm in. A hundred percent. I'm going to Japan just to play that. <laughs> um... We we uh, we recently had uh, some news, and every week we usually cover some gaming lawsuits that are happening. Well, our uh, our friends that make the capture cards here that we use on Insane Games TV, this. and that I use on my channel, um, and they make stream decks, lights, and things like that. You know, they saw that Va- that uh, Valve was making a stream deck of their own, and they went, ah, ah, Gabe Newell. You shan't be watching us on this one. And they are suing Valve for three billion three hundred and thirty-three million three hundred and thirty-three thousand three hundred and thirty-three dollars and thirty-three cents. <laughs> that does not also include the thirty-three different legal representations that they have taken out, the thirty-three legal counselors, and the four interns that they managed to get. Sorry, <laughs> someone had a cousin that got them in and it was awkward. But Elgato is going full bore against Valve. Sometimes it feels like... Because Elgato actually, like, like on Fiction Zone for a second, Elgato also announced the Stream Deck 2.0 that has some slight upgrades, interchangeable faceplates, a better stand, stuff like that. And they announced it on the same day as the Steam Deck. So, back to the Fiction Zone... Like, 100%, they just looked and said, I'm sorry, we could, we work in the same industry here. That's our name. That's copyright infringement. We're going to sue you for this amount so that you can't see the money when it goes away, and then we get to keep it. Gabe Newell must, Gabe, nah, Gabe Newell must be shitting his pants by right now. Oh, my God. Speaking of that, the greatest cinematography trilogy of all time, the made-for-TV Nick movies, the Fred movies are finally coming to the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Fred and John Cena. (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay, so the, so the question is, it's literally just going to be a pair of jorts, a ball cap, and an armband, because literally in that Nicktoons universe, there's no way you can see John Cena. There's no <laughs> way. He's actually in the Fred movies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that that part, as a WWE fan, I did see a lot of. Yeah. Um, because WWE did a lot of advertising for it. Um, we... I want to see the head. You just said a bunch of words I don't understand. So, so actually, we didn't talk about it, but um, Nick, Nickelodeon All Star Brawl is a game that was announced this past week, and it's kind of like Smash Brothers, but it's using um, intellectual property that was on Nickelodeon, which is a kids programming station over here in the states. I know that I want to see the Hedge was over in the, is over in the UK, um, and so stuff like Angry Beavers, Rocco's Modern Life, Ah Real Monsters. A lot of these have already had characters that are confirmed for the game. Um, and what someone said, and I really want to see, is some of the live-action stuff, too. Like Temple Guards from uh, from Legends of the Hidden Temple. I want to see those in the game. Yes! Um, yes! I will pay any amount of money for that! With some leaked box art, Korra from Legend of Korra is probably going to be in the game. Makes sense. Aang as well. Yep. Yeah, so like a lot of stuff like that, and it's just... There's so much stuff, like, mid-90s Nick has so much stuff that people, like, almost forget about until you say, hey, do you remember Pete and Pete? And people are like, oh my god, do I? Please, please, please tell me that arbitrarily while you're playing the game, Aang just disappears from the character selection. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you just, you have to, like, randomly you'll have to unlock him again. Please, 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 please. And um, just like that, as I got to the level of this, <sighs> he disappeared. <laughs> Oh my god, I... Um, let's see, uh, it was on Nick UK. Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, I can see, because there's like there some There were so characters. many scary things that they created for that show. And, the, and there's some, I know that there's been some actors that like were in multiple episodes. I think that there were like some characters of the vignettes that carried over between stories as well. Um, can we play as Reptar? The answer is yes, that is one of the confirmed uh, characters. Um, did I hear Korra? Yes. So what's this called? Nick Nick Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl, or it might just be like Nick All Stars Brawl. Sorry, I'm gonna use the chat computer to really quick open a link to. Interest. You know what? Good for GameStop that the first link <laughs> after the stories is the pre how to pre order it for PS5 on GameStop. That IGN one might have the confirmed character list. Cannot wait to mean Nigel Thornberry. Smashing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. So the confirmed list of characters: Michelangelo from TMNT, Leonardo from TMNT, Nigel Thornberry from Smashing. the Wild Powdered Toast Man from Ren and Stimpy. Yes. SpongeBob SquarePants from SpongeBob SquarePants. Sandy Cheeks from SpongeBob SquarePants. Patrick Star from SpongeBob SquarePants. Oblina from Ah Real Monsters. Lucy Loud from The Loud House, Lincoln Loud from The Loud House, Helga from Hey Arnold, Reptar from Rugrats, Zim from Invader Zim, and... It's gonna catch them all because he's Danny Phantom. Yes. And that's just like what they release as their Phantom. official list. Like, you look at that and you're like, all right, there's two more turtles that could be in there, for instance. And Splinter. And Casey Jones. So, like, well, you gotta leave some for DLC. But, like, there's gonna be a lot of... Uh, there's a lot that are there, but then again, with like leaked box art, you're like, oh, that's that's Korra, kind of thing. Um, and, then, and then there's like, what do people want to see? So when I say like the Temple Guard thing, that's something we're we're back in the truth zone. The Temple Guards haven't been confirmed yet, but that's one that I want to see because I was all about Legends of the Hidden Temple when I was younger. Imagine how terrifying though to step a little bit back oh, into the. Farcical. I want Pete Summers and his attacks to just be all like with slime. <laughs> Was, uh, was, uh, imagine how terrifying the Hidden Temple would have been if you're trying to put the, the idols together and suddenly you just hear, John Cena! Da, 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 and you see a 10 year old kid get absolutely bricked <laughs> out of there. Just, ah! Like, oh, looks like John's on a tear again. <laughs> the, the blue team has absolutely lost it. <laughs> I want, like, one of the sets would be the Double Dare set. Like, that's what I want. I'll hold out from Artie from PNP. Mm -hmm. um, I would absolutely love some characters from Salute Your Shorts. Oh, um, yeah. Yep. I'd, I'd pay. Um, I can't wait to see how this goes. 
to be totally honest, it's probably going to be a lot of cartoon characters that they already have the sprites yes, for. That's, um, it's, it's, that that list is is a majority of them are already characters that have been in previous Nickelodeon IPs. Yep. And specifically beat em up IPs. The issue with um, getting someone with most of the characters, the people from live action, um, is that you're paying for likeness rights. Yeah, you can't do the NCAA thing and not pay them for their likeness. Yeah. Like, unless um, you don't do the character justice like you did in the Avengers Yeah, or, or game. like if you, yeah. you know, all right, it's it's uh, Amanda Bynes and it doesn't look anything like the, the actress, whatever. It's just got a couple, like, but little hallmarks. But you know hallmarks. what we could do is but, we could but bring in the Dancing Lobsters. But, but, you name it, but you name it that and the character select screen and, yeah, you have thematic um, attacks and it could still work. You could. To, oh my god, one of the best finishes would be. What'd you do that for? You ain't my cannoli! <laughs> okay. Um, and I did hear talk about how its netcode is going to be better optimized. We don't um, speak of that game, <laughs> I, I forget exactly what it's called. I could, I could look it up, but like its netcode is going to be optimized um, so that it's better for competition. If it lags and doesn't get the input, it is going to assume that it's performing the same last input instead of just stopping where it is, like Smash does. Like, Smash isn't great online because it has that older style of netcode. Also, because so their, their this lobbies is, are run off of an adjustment of Windows so 95. Like, so. <laughs> from the ground up, this is meant to be something that can be played competitively online, which I find absolutely amazing. I only see one problem with this, is that it's going to be released by Game Mill Entertainment. Okay. They created the last two Nicktoons kart racing games that Ooh. didn't do so great and are... I will say I wasn't They're impressed with what so I funny. visually saw. Like they, like um, the video bit that I saw had like Patrick Star going around, and he just kind of had a more vacant look on his face than Patrick usually does. It looked like they were going more for realistically shaded three D models rather than if you're doing all these cartoon Nicktoon characters, go with cell shaded. So hopefully they they change that art direction. No, this is Patrick. I am not a cell shade. <laughs> The low frame rate and low resolution sprites of Pete and Pete would be fitting for the nineties. Oh my god, imagine one of the one of the attacks could definitely be a screen wipe that just plays the all that theme. Just the, the it's all of that! Boom! Everything in that circle gets eaten. Like, no. uh, uh, one of the powers. Five minutes, everybody starts the timer. Not a five minute timer, but you know, fifteen seconds later. If if this game takes off. Uh, I do have two degrees of separation to the person that wrote, directed, and starred in all of the Wienerville sketches. Um, I met this person. Uh, I went to high school with his uh, 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 niece. Uh, very cool guy. Would love to talk about this stuff because uh, there's a reason Wienerville disappeared off of Nickelodeon. Because he didn't want to sign over the rights to all his stuff. So nice. if this takes off, I will reach out to him <gasps> to see if we can uh, do a thing. Kablam! I want Kablam. Oh, all of those characters would go so well! <laughs> There's literally not a character from Kablam that wouldn't fit. Oh, I would love to get Mrs. Big Head, though. Oh. Ed! Ed! <laughs> Uh, we could we could yeah, reminisce we could. about about we, 90s yeah, cartoons. We could, we could yell about four hours, but we're already we're 15 minutes over again. We, we are out of farcical topics from the hat. If you want to help us and want to create some lulls, uh, Boater's going to be on holiday next week. But I, Steve, and I will be here, and I do have a surprise guest in the wings. I won't be here next week. You, that's right, you weren't going to be here next week. I do have a surprise guest in the wings to help me host the Nerd Glasses podcast. Um, and I am super excited to get to have the uh, the screen with them. Um, but, Boater, enjoy your vacation. I shall. Uh, and definitely take it easy. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining oh, us. Yeah. Definitely um, stop by in the future if you're ever around. Um, we can always throw the microphone on the table and, and have you in. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I don't do much on Tuesdays. So. Yay! So, yeah, gl it was awesome to have you. It was awesome to not have you uh, un unleash a, a swear storm at us, unwitting. <laughs> that was time. so good. That was so good. We were just time. so flat-footed. We were like, oh. 
Are we gonna get in it's, trouble? It started, and then even the store is open. Like, Dan's did, right yeah, there. Dan even like leaned in from the back room to look because he heard Steve using the words. It's kind of like what the fuck. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you all so much for watching. There is no Citadel tonight. Make, uh, Dave says he has someone lined up for Nerd Glasses next week, so catch us next week at 7 o'clock right here at Insane Games TV. And hey, follow as well for all of the wonderful streamers seven days a week that we've got lined up here. Check our schedule. See all the different cool shows that we have. It's a treat, and we really hope that you'll follow. Preemptively, you're welcome. Hit that follow button and then join in the fun. Uh, more like Rick and Morris probably missed it. Yes, no Citadel tonight because otherwise I would get home and then have to be up in three hours to catch my flight. <laughs> I'd rather not do that. Hmm. Hmm. And I, and I'm too old to pull an all nighter now. And I can't sleep on a plane. So, anyway, folks, thank you so much for watching. From all of us here on the Nerd Glasses Podcast and all of us here at Insane Games TV, have a fantastic week. We'll see you next time. Good night. Thank you.